guys and welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be the next episode in my Letter Like a Lefty series and what I wanted to do this time was to actually show you how I go about writing my alphabets. So I have a couple of different styles that I want to show you guys. I'm hoping that it won't take too long because I will actually time lapse some sections of this. Um, so I'd like to actually do one full video with all of them. However, if it does get too long, then I'll do a part one and a part two. So we'll see how that goes once I'm actually filming. So one of the things that I wanted to do is um, I'm actually going to do it in my bullet journal so that you can see how I actually, um, you know, would use these in my bullet journal. And to do that, I'm going to move my bookmark and I'm going to get to a clean spread. And I've got two different pens, um, actually probably three different pens that I'm going to use. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple so that, you know, I'm not using any sort of fancy, fancy tools or whatever for the most part, um, just so that you can use kind of whatever you've got lying around the house. So one of the things that I wanted to do straight off the bat was to show you guys my normal handwriting. Um, so let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So I will try and um, label all of my different, all the different styles that I use on kind of a regular basis. However, I don't necessarily have official names for them in my mind, so it's gonna be kind of random, to be, to be perfectly honest. So let's get started with my normal um, handwriting, how I actually write sort of every day in my bullet journal. One thing that you will notice with my standard, um, my standard printing, I guess if you call it, in my bullet journal, I do one letter per box. And so that gives me kind of a more uniform um, spacing between it. And I think it just kind of looks a little bit neater. It's easier for me to read personally. I know for some people, this is probably going to drive you crazy and it's not going to be very easy to read. But for me, um, it, it actually does kind of help not like squish up my words. So what I have on the top here is my standard um, caps alphabet, and I am using a 0.5 Inkjoy gel pen, which is what I've currently been using to write in my notebooks. I do also often use a Pilot G1, which is also a 0.5, which is actually a slightly finer 0.5 than this one, but this is just the pen that I'm currently using. Um, and then I also have down at the bottom here, I have my lowercase alphabet, and I will actually sometimes use this in my bullet journal, in rare occasions, so I thought I would go ahead and include it. And one of the things that you'll notice is I tend to still use capital M's, N's, and R's when I am writing in lowercase. Um, I do have a different kind of Q and a Z that I use, but that is just my standard alphabet. The next thing I thought I would show you is my normal cursive. So this is one that I have been trying to work on improving because I am not very good at cursive. Normally my cursive looks kind of terrible um, and I can actually give you uh, an example of that if you would like, but um, I have been practicing using the alphabet, um, what's the practice sheets that Kara of Boho Berry has given out because I like the style. I like that it's kind of a modern, a modernized alphabet that's still got some sort of classic, a classic look to it, but it's not overly flourishy. So that's something that you guys will notice in my writing. I tend to not do a lot of flourishes. It's something that I'm not very good at, um, and I just don't particularly like the style in my own writing. I have seen people who do lovely flourishes, and I'm very jealous, but that's just not something that I do. Um, so this is not my alphabet, if you will. This is adapted from my approximation of how um, of the lettering sheets that Kara of Boho Berry uses. Now, again, it is going to be slightly different because I am left-handed and I find it really hard to get that particular slant that you're supposed to get with that style of writing. You guys will see. So.
version of the cursive alphabet. Um, you will notice that I don't have as much of a slant um, and I actually write in a very odd way for me to just get the slant that I do have. And that is something that if you are trying to mimic something that is typically slanted to the right, it's much easier for righties to do. If you're a lefty, you might have to play around with the placement of your paper is what I've found. Um, and even still, I, I'm not very good. Um, you'll see that a lot of my letters are still fairly up and down, which personally, it doesn't really bother me that much. I actually don't mind having the more up and down look to it. Um, I don't care for having a left slant. Um, I just, I don't really write that way, so it's not something that's natural for me. So I've been trying to practice this when I do, for example, I use this style of cursive when I do my gratitude log to try and get a little bit better at it so that when I'm writing letters in cursive, it doesn't look like a third grader. <laughs> um, because, yeah, in the US, we don't really do a lot of cursive. I actually learned it in school, but I never really had to use it. So it's something that I, I'm not very good at. So I always love when people are like, oh, you know, you letter, you must have really nice handwriting. No, no, it doesn't actually translate, but I'm working on it. So that is kind of my normal handwriting, if you will. So like what I would do with a standard normal pen um, for a cursive and for print, I would also do this with like a fountain pen, any of that sort of stuff. Um, so what I wanted to show you guys now is how I do my nicer lettering, which I tend to use a micron um, just because if I want to do any sort of like decorations over it, it doesn't smudge, whereas this is something that I, you know, I can't highlight over this because the gel, um, the gel pens will smudge on me. Um, so I, I do tend to use varying sizes of the Micron and I picked the 05 to do today just because I think it might be a little bit easier to see. So let's do that. <laughs> One of my favorite alphabets to do and I apologize if I got off camera when I was writing I forgot that I was zoomed in um, so this is one that I do a lot of times for just kind of simple headers that look nice so I typically will use either um, a monoline pen so something like a micron or I'll use a small brush pen and I'll have you know the same upstroke and downstroke and it just gives a little added weight to the letters and the way that I typically do it is that my letters will tend to be either two dot like two squares high or three squares high sometimes if I want an even more elongated look and a little bit less than one square wide. Um, so you'll notice that it's much easier for me to do that with the micron because it's just a much finer pen. Um, so if I have it, you know, even a finer line than like the 05, for example, they might be even even finer. With the brush pen, they do tend to get a little bit wider just because I have that added weight on the downstroke, but they're still kind of, you know, they're still um, much skinnier than they are tall. And I do drop all of my, like, cross 
bars. I, I have no idea what the real word for it even is, but anything that's got like a crossbar or um, some kind of like a, a notable difference between the top and the bottom half, I drop it down. So for example, the A, the bar is really low. The B, the top circle or top oval is much bigger than the bottom one. Um, with the G, E, F, G, and H, they're all dropped down low. Um, the K is dropped down fairly low. I do bring the J up higher just because I like the look of that better. Um, let's see, the P also has a really, like there's only a very small um, bar left down at the bottom to notice that it's a P versus a D. So that's how I drop everything kind of down to the bottom third of the letter. Now I do sometimes do with the top third, however, I personally don't care for that particular look as much, so this is the one I tend to do, so this is the one I'm gonna show you guys. So I have the two different versions that I do of that. And the next thing I wanted to do was show you guys my serif. for the angle um, because I'm zoomed in it's actually I have to angle my book up a little bit so this is the serif alphabet and this is kind of my Halloweeny serif alphabet so you'll see that I've got like little curly cues and they're not very um, like straight up and down when I do my letters and I do actually do a lot more with my lowercase when I'm doing serif because I like the look of some of the lowercase letters a little bit better and these are just kind of the general ones that I do. Sometimes I'll have a slightly different style. For example, you know, I might do the Q a little bit differently or I might not do a little serif tick on the O um, like I did on the lowercase, what have you. But yeah, so this is my little serif alphabet that I like to use. Finally, I wanted to show you guys my standard brush lettering. So I have two different alphabets that I'm gonna show you and I hope I'm gonna have enough room to do them all on this page. I'm not sure if I will. The first one is going to be my standard um, brush lettering cursive. So it's not going to be as fancy as my print cursive, but it's going to be a little bit more up and down and you're gonna see this style a lot when I do my quotes. You know, a lot of times I'll do with my quotes, I'll pick a couple of words, maybe one or two, that I'll bring out and I'll do more in a bouncy lettering style with a Tombow and then I'll go back in and I'll do the other words with something like a Pentel sign pen that's a much smaller pen and then I'll do more of like an up and down stayed is kind of the way I think of it, a stayed style of cursive. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I do that. <laughs>
Okay, so you'll notice that I pulled out my little piece of paper um, to do the brush lettering. That's something, especially with brush lettering, that I do like to do just because I tend to smudge a lot. Um, you might have noticed when I was doing the, cap the capital alphabet that I was kind of hesitating and I realized that I don't write in capital letters very often at all when I do brush lettering. It is pretty rare um, and it honestly comes back to the fact that I just really don't care for the way that a lot of capital letters look in brush lettering. Personally, I just haven't found a style that I really like. Um, I do sometimes do it more maybe in bouncy lettering because of the style that I do, um, but at least with this, um, it, it's somewhat rare and a lot of times when I have to do a capital letter, I tend to be unhappy with how it comes out. But with this particular style, um, especially with the lower case, I don't have any extra sort of loops or like added bits to the letters or whatever. Um, you'll notice that, you know, all of my like B, D, F, H, K and L, things that might have like an extra loop in them don't have that. The F is pretty simple. My R doesn't have a loop in it. The O doesn't have a loop. And so this is one that I use when I want to, to be a little bit more, you know, maybe more professional looking or maybe not the right word for it, but you know, to kind of fade more into the background. It's not something that I'm actually accentuating. It's not a word that I'm accentuating. And so I use this kind of an alphabet when I want to do that. And the last one that I have is my more bouncy style of alphabet, and I'll go ahead and show you that one. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and just do the lowercase. Um, one, I don't know that I'm gonna have enough room to do all of them, and two, I, like I said, as I was writing this, I realized that when I do my brush lettering, I tend to not do the uppercase alphabet very much at all. So we'll kind of play that one by ear. So let's go ahead and do bouncy lettering. <laughs> lowercase bouncy alphabet and like I mentioned before when I'm doing this kind of stuff I really don't use an uppercase um, I don't even have a fully cohesive uppercase alphabet for certain letters um, with this particular style I, I kind of have some but um, the uppercase is something that I tend to change a lot more it's not something that I've got sort of standardized whereas with the lowercase alphabet, I do pretty much have a standardized lowercase alphabet that I use when I do this kind of bouncy lettering. Now, that's not to say that I always do this as bouncy. You'll notice that my bouncy lettering is not super different. Um, they kind of are still in a, some semblance of a line. And sometimes I just mean it as these are my more like loopy styles. Um, it's definitely more of like a modern calligraphy. It's a departure from the kind of the classic look. Um, but I don't necessarily always have it in sort of the bouncy, like one's really high, one's really low kind of style, but this is just the other sort of more fun style that I like to do. And this you'll notice I have um, typically my things like the A, D, G, anything that has a circle is ten tends to be a much smaller circle with the exception of like with the P, um, it tends to get a little bit bigger. I have loops on all of my upping like my upper letters or yeah all the upper parts of the letters except for the T I don't tend to do a loop on the T I just don't really care for it and when I do the crossbar for the T sometimes actually often it'll be the straight line but sometimes I'll do kind of a flourishy like a longer one depending on what the word is and the the style that I'm going for um, the O you'll see I have a really big loop the R has a fairly large loop as well and I have little loops on my V and my W um, but by and large, it's not a very frilly style. I don't have a lot of extra flourishes that I add to my letters, and I never really have. Um, this is just kind of the style that I that I really like, and so that's that's what I write with. It's what I'm most comfortable with. So yeah, let me zoom back out so you guys can see everything. 
All right, so I hope that that kind of helps for any of you who had questions on sort of how I do my alphabets. Um, these are pretty much the standard ones that I use. I'm sure I've got other ones that I use once in a while, but these are the ones that come up um, most frequently. And you'll notice that in terms of kind of lefty oriented stuff, I really don't always have anything under my hand unless it's something like brush lettering. Like I said, um, I do it a lot with brush lettering just because the pens tend to be inkier and so it's much easier for me to carry up ink, whereas with something like a micron, a lot of times it'll dry fast enough that it's not a big deal. Um, but I do usually have uh, little slips of paper in the back of my notebook, notebook just in case I notice that I'm starting to transfer ink and then I'll go ahead and I'll put it down. You'll notice that I don't really have a lot of slant to my letters. I, I think that might be kind of a lefty thing. We just don't tend to slant or like if we do slant, it tends to be more to the left. And just with the way I write, I tend to either do straight up and down or maybe like a tiny right slant. And even when I'm trying to do a rightward slant, like for this cursive alphabet, it's really, really difficult for me. So yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. If you guys have any comments or questions, please leave them down below and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can and or incorporate them in future videos. Actually, there I had a couple of comments about my alphabet and that's why I decided to do a video about it. So I do try and take um, suggestions and things like that into consideration. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.